Hi everyone. On this lesson we're going to be graphing quadratic functions and on this next slide it shows you what that means. What is a quadratic function? Well it just means that it has an x squared term and when it does that means that it is going to graph as a parabola. So that's what we have gra graphed on each of these. Notice when a is greater than zero then my parabola opens upward and when a is less than zero, which means it's a negative number, then my parabola opens downward. You've actually had some exposure to this in a previous chapter uh, for this semester. And then we have something called the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that passes through the vertex, right? It's always going to pass through the vertex and that's going to help us write the equation of the axis of symmetry because it is actually a, an equation since it's a vertical line. Now we're going to start out with uh, graphing parabolas defined by f of x equals x squared plus k. Okay, so k, um, if k is positive, then the graph is going to shift upward. If k is negative, then it's going to shift downward. And notice what we're comparing to y equals x squared is our common graph, our standard graph, parent graph, you can call it different things. And then the vertex is always at 0, k. And the axis of symmetry is the y axis. So for this, the axis of symmetry will be x equals zero because the y-axis is at x equals zero. Okay, so we're going to graph. Notice the direction, say, sketch the graph of each quadratic function, label the vertex, and sketch and label the axis of symmetry. Now there's different ways that you could go about graphing this, but we are going to start out by identifying our vertex. Okay, I'm also going to talk about transformations or, you know, the fact that this shifts down. Okay. Now, if you look at this, my at, my vertex is going to be at 0, negative 2. It's nice if you can just identify that vertex right off the bat based on the information that was given to you on that previous slide. It tells us that my vertex is at 0, k. In this case, k is negative 2. And then um, this also tells me that the, right, this part tells me that it shifts down, downward or down, shifts down to, right? Well, I know that my vertex is going to be at zero, negative two. Now let's remind, re, let me remind you of the common graph. Let me use a different color here. The common graph is y equals x squared, which is this graph. The vertex of the common graph is at 0, 0, <coughs> right? 0, 0. And then we have on each side, we have a point at 1, 1 and at negative 1, 1. So we're going to use that common graph to talk about this as we work through the lesson. Uh, this is supposed to be dashed lines. I'm going to try to make that look a little more dashed. Okay, so now we're going to graph um, the uh, this other uh, graph. Now you can find some ordered pairs if you would like, right on either side of my vertex. So if I did that, let me use the pink so I can keep this color coordinate coordinated. Um, if you do this, I don't want a zero there. <laughs> How about, okay, to the left, if I'm at negative 1, then I would just say, okay, that's negative 1 squared minus 2. So notice that I'm going to be at 1 minus 2, which is at negative 1. And then if I plug in the positive 1, which is to the right of my vertex, right here at 1, I'm going to have 1 squared minus 2. 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And notice then I get the same y coordinate because it is going to be symmetrical um, about uh, on either side of the vertex, right? Now, we also want to talk about the axis of symmetry, okay? So my axis of symmetry is going to be at, let me write this out, axis of symmetry. 
just going to say a of s. And that is going to be at x equals 0. And I also want to put that on my graph. Right? It says sketch and label. Well, I've labeled it here. You can label it on the graph as well. Remember, the, the um, bluish colored graph is not the graph we're graphing. It's going to be the pink graph. Now, if I graph negative 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 1, you can also look at that as, oh, look, this point is 2 below the point on my other uh, parent graph for both of these. So if you just counted, if you graphed this um, parent graph and then you counted, you would be at the same place. So here is our parabola. You guys don't have to really put a ton of points on the graph to get it um, completed. And I will tell you on my lab, you usually just graph the vertex and one of the symmetrical points and then it will graph um, the other side. So the symmetrical points, remember, they're at the same height on either side of the vertex. Now we want to graph the axis of symmetry. And we do that with a dashed line. So this, this is my axis of symmetry at x equals 0. And this is basically all the information that we need to find and get it on the graph. Now it's probably more information than you needed to find because you can simplify this a little bit when you're graphing if you want to. You know, just say, okay, here's how I'm going to graph. I'm going to graph by counting. Perfectly fine. But the thing is, I do want you to always identify your vertex. Now, I have it labeled over here, and I could also label it on the graph. But just as long as you have it labeled somewhere, that's fine. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. Notice that this has a negative x squared, so that means that it's going to open uh, downward. And my vertex is going to be at 0, 3. Because remember, when it's written in this form, right, in this form, f of x equals x squared plus k, and that tells me that my vertex is at 0 k. In this case, k is 3. Right? I can also name my axis of symmetry. And it is at x equals 0. <clears throat> now you want to remember that um, it's always going to be the x coordinate of your vertex. And it needs to be written as an equation because it is the equation of a vertical line. Now, this one opens down. Okay, and so you could compare it to, uh, to the original, uh, co our common graph of y equals x squared, right? And that graph was here. Now, if we reflect that graph, because remember the one we are graphing is going to be reflected, and you should always do the reflection before you try to put any other points on here. So then my reflection is going to be reflected over the x-axis. I'm still going to use a dotted line because this is not the graph that I'm asking you for for this question. Okay. Take that off. Put my arrow there. Okay. So now it's reflected, and it, all we have to do is move the graph I just noticed that I need it opens downward. And this is going to be a shift um, three up, right? So if I take my reflected graph, the one that's opening down, and I just count up three, right? One, one, two, three for my vertex. One, two, three for a point on one side of the vertex, and then up three for the other, right? Then my reflection is simply, or my graph is simply up three from the reflected graph opening down. Now you can also find some points on either side of the vertex if you would like to, but you can see that just by counting, we found them. Right, we have a point at 1, 2, and negative 1, 2. And so you could always um, write the table on here for that. 
remember that g of x is the same as y. And so if I um, do my points at negative 1 and 1 and plug them into my equation, right? So that's negative 1 plus 3, which is at 2. This one's also negative 1 plus 3, and that is at 2. Okay, so the pink graph is the one you're graphing. All right. The one thing that we don't have on here yet is my axis of symmetry. Be careful on my lab because a lot of times students will miss the question simply because they don't have their axis of symmetry. And you know the axis of symmetry doesn't show real well when it, it's on the uh, y axis. So you want to be careful on that. All right. So that's at x equals zero. All right. On my lab, you're not going to be graphing these other graphs necessarily, but you can graph on your own paper to help you figure this out. Okay, so we're moving on to a, you guys, you've seen this before when we worked back in chapter three, that um, this is going to be a horizontal shift and it has to do with H, right? So if H is positive, then the graph shifts right. H is positive when um, I see a negative sign because that means minus whatever number it is. And then if there's a plus in there, that's going to be uh, that H is a negative because a minus a negative makes a positive. Our vertex is going to be at H zero. So whatever our H coordinate is, comma zero, that will be it. And the axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals h. So whatever we identify for h, that will be our axis of symmetry. All right, I think we can do one more question here before I stop this video. All right, so this makes a vertex at negative five zero. This is sometimes confusing. Remember if it was x minus negative five, we will write that as x plus 5. And so that's how I know that that is a negative. This one does open up, right? Maybe I should say opens up. And then um, my axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 5 because it has to go through the vertex. So if I put my parent graph on here. You know the paragraph is pretty simple. My vertex is always at 0, 0 and then I have the ordered pair negative 1, 1 and 1, 1. Not very straight there. Okay this one shifts remember because my graph my vertex is a negative this one shifts Maybe I better do that with pink for my color coordinating here. Shifts um, down, sorry, left. <laughs> How about that? Left five because this is a horizontal shift. Now, sometimes if you were, were trying to find order pairs, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So I'm going to just graph the vertex and we're going to look at that to be sure that you can do that if you want to use that method. Here, if I'm going to choose some x's and y's, I'm going to go on the left of negative 5, 0 and to the right. So I would use the ordered or the x coordinate of negative 6 and negative 4. And then when I substitute those in, right, I have negative 6 plus 5 squared. So that's negative 1 squared, which is 1. And then if I have negative 4 plus 5, that's positive 1 squared, which is 1. Now notice it, sh it only shifts left, it doesn't shift up or down. So notice I have those same points, right? Negative 4, 1, negative 6, 1. And this is the graph of g of x equals x plus 5 squared. My axis of symmetry right here through my vertex at x equals negative 5. And my vertex was negative five zero. And that's it. We have it graphed. Okay. I'm going to stop this video and pick this lesson up on the next one.